Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to let you know about my website, jrtv.com, where we have hundreds of different templates available for DaVinci Resolve 17, 16, and 15. All of them are backwards compatible with the newest version of DaVinci Resolve. If you haven't taken a look, the selection of templates is pretty diverse with everything that you would typically think when you think templates, everything from titles, transitions, infographs, logo stings, slideshows, video displays, video effects, compositing elements, as well as a bunch of color pre preset tools specifically for DaVinci Resolve's color page. If you're interested in taking a look for yourself, there's a link in the description. So if you're new to DaVinci Resolve, you'd quickly realize that once you made a project in the wrong frame rate, that it locks it out. And if you've come from other editors, you would be able to just simply change the frame rate and it would be all perfectly fine. And in the background, it would do its interpolation for the clips that weren't the same frame rate as the timeline and you'd be perfectly fine. Uh, but yeah, DaVinci Resolve locks it. There are a couple of reasons as to why it locks it, but uh, for most creators, that isn't really an issue because interpolation is perfectly fine for most creators until you get into doing uh, VFX work. That's when that becomes an issue when you have that on your timeline or if you're making an in-depth edit and you're putting a lot of work into specific frames, you don't want to down the road change something where you're shifting it on the timeline and now you have you know interpolation um you know potentially changes something up a little bit at one point i think it was from 15 to 16 there was a big push for getting this to be an option to change it you can now create new timelines that can have custom settings within the same project so you can change the format you can have different frame rates and size within the same project. So that's huge. You can even change the frame rate and size within timelines that have already been made in your project, which is kind of big. So if you know what I'm talking about, it's kind of a good thing. But they never implemented it. Let's, okay, so let's set the premise. You pretty much edited a project, you went to the deliver page and you realize that it's a wrong frame rate. So how do we fix that? Um, there are going to be a little caveats here because once you go from one frame rate to another frame rate, you're going to be taking, um, you know, a, a project that was interpolated across the whole project to a pro to um, a project that isn't, or one that wasn't, and now it is. And interpolation is just an easy way for uh, your editor to determine. Okay, we have a time amount of time that is going to lapse. Let's say one minute, and let's say you have a, a camera that is shooting in 24 frames, but you want to have a 60 frames per second timeline. Well, there's there's a lot of empty space there if we're going to play that one minute straight through. So you end up doing duplicate frames, but for most people, they wouldn't be able to notice that because it's still moving like a 24 frames per second shot and vice versa. If you were to put a 60 frames per second onto a 24 frames per second, you're just going to be skipping a lot of frames. It's not something that you would really notice, but it is something to be conscious of. So, all right, so we have our timeline and I set up this little project here. I have a hundred frames per second uh, clip. Let's back this up and remove all of that. All right, so I have a hundred hundred frames per second clip and we can see our time, right? That's going to be our time, which is here. And then here is going to be the frame number that we currently have, right? So that's pretty much uh, five seconds and it's going to be the 100 frames per second. So if I was going to you know, um, go uh, out to the render page, we see we don't have that as an option. If we come back here, we go into our master project settings, we see that we can't change that frame rate. So what do we do here? What we can do is we can right click and we can go into timelines, create a new timeline, and we can open this up and come over here into format. So what I just did there is we timelines, create, new timeline and then use project settings. We're going to uncheck that. So now we have the options and then we're going to go into format here. We can change the resolution if that's necessary. But the big thing that this whole video is about is changing the frame rate. So let's change this to what a normal frame rate would be, right? So we'll do 2997 and we'll hit create. So now um, typically your project's going to look like this. Now we can take our uh, clip and we can put it in here. And if we play this, we'll see that, okay, let's zoom in all the way in here. So here are our frame numbers. Over here, it's going to say the frame number. So we go to frame number one, it's displaying frame number three. 
we go to frame number two, it's displaying frame number six. So we're skipping frames, right? So that's that whole interpolation thing that it was saying. But at the end, as you can see here, we have pretty much the same thing, right? This is going to pretty much be the, the uh, five second mark. And here we're at the five second mark as well. So time wise, you know, if, if we play this over time, it's still the same, but we can't really notice that, you know, we're, we're, we're skipping a lot of frames here unless you're really paying attention. Um, and the other way I can go is we can go create and then we can come in and we can go, let's go up to 120 frames and we'll bring that clip in. <clears throat> so we have frame number one, we're still on frame number zero. We're frame number two, we're on frame number one. Frame number three, we, we don't dump up. And so we can see like right there, Frame number six to seven, it's the same frame, right? It hasn't changed. So that is what the interpolation thing that I was, I was speaking about before. So <clears throat> let's go in and delete both of these timelines because we currently have this one timeline that's 100 frames and it doesn't work, right? So we can go in and we can create our new timeline and we can switch this up to whatever our frame rate is, right? So now that we did that, what we can do is you can take your old timeline and you can drop your old timeline on here, right? That would be the easiest because then you don't have to do anything. You don't have to copy and paste, do anything. You just drag your old timeline onto the new timeline. Now, when we go into deliver, we can deliver that same timeline on 2997 and everything would be perfectly fine. If we ever need it to edit it, we could just simply click and now we can edit it. So. I'll just simply, let's just throw in a generator quick on a couple different areas in here. So we have our generator. And now if we come back, we can go like that. And now we can see we have our generator there. We have that. And then at the end, oh, we made it longer. So then we have our generator there as well. So it's our 100 frames per second. Now we're on our uh, 29.97 frame rate. So if you're unsure like which timeline you're on, it'll always show it up here. So like it says timeline two that we're currently on. If I click on this, it's going to say timeline one is where we're at. You can also click on this little button here and click this. This is to have multiple tabs for timelines. And we can click this button here and then we can go into timeline two. So we can see timeline two here and we can see timeline one here. And then we can easily just start to manipulate our timeline one, whichever one that we made all of our edits on and then we can have it here in timeline too. So that is in a very easy way of, uh, of going about doing that. The other thing that you have with this whole uh, tab thing is you can also click this button. And if we were to close this, we can open that up down here. So now we have both of those timelines. So we can see that we're at five, let's go to like an, a, an even amount. Let's go to six seconds. So there's six seconds, let's scroll that, or go out to six seconds. And now this should go to the six second mark, as you can see there. It's just one frame off of six seconds, but it's pretty much the same thing. And that's just be due to the interpolation. But uh, yeah, that is probably the easiest way to deal with uh, making a project in the wrong frame rate, but being able to uh, export it with the other frame rate um, that you desired to export it at. Um, just be cautious of the interpolation and how it works. I feel like uh, showing that video with the, the, the frame number really uh, helped display how that actually works. But the other thing that I could say is if you wanted to, you could copy everything. You could copy your whole timeline and you could control C, bring it down, control V, paste it. And then you would have it in the, uh, the you know, the, the timeline that you would actually uh, want it to be. But you could end up messing things up doing it that way. So I just like to put the time, the other timeline on your timeline. And I think that that makes things a little bit easier, but that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. You learned something. Let me know in the comments if you knew about interpolation and how that worked. If I did a good job explaining it, I feel like that was significantly better explaining how interpolation works through that, uh, showing the actual frame numbers and uh, going frame by frame. But um, yeah, let me know in the comments. But with that being said, my name's JR. Thank you for watching. Stay safe. Peace. Have a good one, guys.